On page 97, we're going to look at two things. One of them is the division property, meaning that if you have a radical with a fraction inside of it, you can break it up to have that same, the same index and have the radical on the top of the fraction with the same index and have the radical on the bottom of the fraction. It's called the division property. The other thing that we're going to put on page 97, since you have space off to the side, For this unit, especially when we're doing things without our calculator, you need to know your powers, your perfect squares, your perfect cubes, your perfect fourths. And so what we're going to do here is put down our bases all the way up to 9. And first, we're going to square them. So 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81. But for cube roots, you need to know your perfect cubes. Generally, without your calculator, you will need to know what 2 cubed is, what 3 cubed is, what 4 cubed is, and what 5 cubed is. This one, for interest's sake, doesn't come up without a calculator. So I'll put it in blue. For perfect fourths, you'll need to know without your calculator that 2 to the 4 is 16, 3 to the 4 is 81, but generally, that's as high as you have to go without your calculator. 4 to the 4 is 256. 5 to the 4 is 3,120. No. 5 to the 4 is 625. You don't have to know those. And after the power of 4, they mainly just stop at 2s. So we need to know certain powers quickly, easily, without the use of our calculator. And the reason we need to know them is for questions like example two. I can go back. Part A wants us to write it as a mixed radical. So we can use that division property to say, on the top, I would have the cube root of negative 16. On the bottom, I would have the cube root of 135. And in order for us to simplify this, to write this as a mixed radical, we have to think what times what is 16. And one of them, because we're doing cube roots, has to be a perfect cube. So if we go to our chart and we look at the perfect cubes, there's not that many that we needed to know without our calculator. Here, I'll slide up to see that chart again. Perfect cubes are right here, 8, 27, 64, and 125. Do any of those numbers divide 16? 8 does. So I would go back to this question and say, I know that 16 is negative 8 times 2. Does 8 divide 135? No. So our next perfect cube was 27. 27 divide 135? Yes. 27 times 5. So if we can find a perfect cube that divides the number inside, we could rewrite this as multiplying. And after we've rewritten it as multiplying, well, what times what times what is negative 8? Negative 2. So the top becomes negative 2 cube root of 2. What times what times what is 27? 
it's 3. So the bottom becomes 3 cube root of 5. And we can use our division property again to finish this question off and say our final answer is going to equal oops, negative 2 thirds cube root of 2 fifths. We have a number in front and we have a number inside, so this is a mixed radical. How did we change it from an entire radical to a mixed radical? Because we were dealing with cube roots, we had to find perfect cubes that divided 16 and 135. In part B, part B is asking us to take the mixed radical which is negative 3, fourth root of 2 over 27, and write that as an entire radical. In order to do this, we're going to need to write 3 as the fourth root of something. I can't do anything with the negative. Because if it's an even index, the negative can't go inside. If it's an odd index, remember the index is the little number. If it's an odd index, the negative can go inside. Just like we saw in the previous example, there was a negative 8 inside. With an even index, the negative has to stay outside because whenever you have an even index, the answer is always positive. So in order to figure out what number goes in here with the fourth root, we need to know our perfect powers of 4. What is 3 to the power of 4? 81. How do we multiply these together? Okay, well, this is the fourth root of 81 over 1, if I write it as a fraction. And here, I have the fourth root of 2 over the fourth root of 27. If I multiply this all together, I can multiply the tops. should be 81 times 2. And on the bottom, I would still have the fourth root of 27. Okay? Now, you could multiply 81 times 2 and get 162 if you wanted. But now, I have a fourth root on top, fourth root on the bottom. I could write this as one big fraction, 81 times 2 over 27. How did I do this? So the final answer is a 4 through to 6. What did I do? Just magic? Multiply 81 by 2, you get 162, and divide by 27. Is that easy mental math? No. Is, and the reason I didn't multiply it out and write 162, because I think this is easier math. What's 81 divided by 27? It's 3. If you know 27 is 3 cubed, and you know 81 is 3 to the exponent of 4, then this is easy to see that this is 3. And then 3 times 2 will equal 6. 
So sometimes, even though you could multiply things out, like 81 times 2 was so tempting to multiply and get 162 the whole time, sometimes you might choose not to do that because there might be something else that simplifies earlier and easier, especially when you don't have a calculator. So this is written as an entire radical. Questions for practice on this one are 3, 4, 7, and 8.